Good morning, friends. Happy Tuesday morning. It's great to be with you. I want to encourage you, grab your hot coffee, grab your hot tea, and let's dive into God's Word this morning. Let's exercise our spiritual muscles so that we're ready for what we have to do today. As we're diving in, we're going to be in Acts chapter 17, and we're looking at partners in ministry, how Paul begins to partner with some of the folks in the region. And as we're diving in this morning, I want to encourage you as we do every day, if you have any prayer requests, please type those in to the comment section there if you're with us on Facebook. And if you're with us on one of our other platforms, the YouTube or the podcast, you can always email us at biblecast at tfc.org. And I want to give a special encouragement for anyone who has just kind of found us on Facebook, but you're not currently a follower of Trinity Fellowship Church, I want to encourage you to go ahead and follow us. That way you'll get the alerts when BibleCast is going live, as well as all of our other events and activities that we have. All right, as we're diving in this morning, we're continuing exactly where we left off yesterday. So Paul is speaking, he's standing there in Athens, he's in the center uh, kind of of the city there, and he's speaking about God. Here we go, uh, chapter 17, verse 29. Since our lineage can be traced back to God, how could we even think that the divine image could be compared to something made of gold, silver, or stone, sculpted by man's artwork and clever imagination? Now, here Paul is really driving his point home. If you'll remember from yesterday, he's been walking through the city of Athens and he's seen all of the different idols that they have all throughout the city. And he specifically was highlighting one called to the unknown God. In other words, <clears throat> the folks of Athens, the citizens of Athens, were so into their idol worship, they wanted to make sure they covered everybody, so they kind of had one for you know a catch-all. And Paul says, guess what? I can tell you who the catch-all is. The unknown God. The unknown God that you don't know is the one I want to introduce you to. And so he begins to introduce them to who God is. And he specifically then is now going after the idol component because he's saying, look, you were created by this creator. You were created by God. You were created by someone who is intelligent, who cared very much about your individual identity, your individual self. And he cares about you today. He's like, how can we possibly make an image of this one? How can you possibly make a, a created image of the one that created you is effectively what Paul is saying here. And I think this is really significant. And when we're thinking about this, you know, this whole passage is sharing with us how do we share the gospel with others? How do we share the good news? And this is one of the great ways to really help begin to understand about how we can share who God is. Because you know, every individual, no matter what their background is, believe that they were created generally for a purpose, that there was a reason for their uh, self to be created. And then you can ask, okay, if you have that reason, well, where did that reason come from? Did that just come from nothing or did it come from a creator who created you for a reason? And if he created you for a reason, he must have created you intentionally. And it's just a great way of opening the door into someone's heart. Now look, let's see what it says. It says, In the past, God tolerated our ignorance of these things, but now the time of deception has passed away. He commands us all to repent and turn to God, for the appointed day has risen in which He is going to judge the world in righteousness by the man, that's a capital M, the man He has designated. Now again, Paul's telling the stories here and he's giving a real clear thing. The time to repent has come. Now remember this word repent, when we see it in the New Testament, is, is, really has two meanings to it. One of them it is it's metanoia. It means to change your mind, to think a different way, to have a different thought, to change the way you're thinking, to change your pattern of thinking. And even more than just change your pattern of thinking, the second part of it is, and return to God. So it's, a, it's, it's like turn around, go the other way. You're leaving God, turn around, change your mind, and start thinking in a way that's leading you to God. So he's saying God commands us to repent, for He has appointed, well the appointed day has risen, it's now here, which He's going to judge the world in righteousness by the man He has designated. Now, when He says judge the world, we know that Jesus came, he very clearly says in John 3, he says, I have not come to judge the world, but I've come to save it. So what Paul's saying here is he's saying, look, the world is going to be judged by Jesus. In other words, you're going to look like Jesus or you're going to look like the world. And how do you look like Jesus? You accept him as your Lord and Savior. The, the standard by which God is going to judge the earth is Jesus. He is that standard. And when we accept Jesus, then we are accepting that standard for our own life. Meaning, we, Jesus imparts or imputes is the theological term, his righteousness onto us. And then we're in this great place where we then can stand up to God's righteousness. And he continues, he says, And 
the proof given to the world that God has chosen this man, again, capital M, talking about Jesus, is this. He resurrected him from among the dead. Now, Paul's dropping the bomb on him right here. He's saying, look, the reason we know this is true, the reason we know this is what God was doing, the reason we know this is right is because this man was killed and God raised him from the dead. You know, when we look at all of the gospel and the incredible truth that we find in the gospel, you know, so often as Christians, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday, we want to go back to the Bible to prove out who Jesus is that he says he is. And that makes complete sense. We're Christians. We believe this is God's word. But when we're speaking to a world that doesn't necessarily accept the Bible yet, they haven't got there yet, we have to understand that the resurrection is the power of the gospel. The resurrection is where it all comes from. And that's what Paul is leaning on here. He's saying, look, the proof given to the world that God has chosen Jesus is this. He resurrected him from among the dead. And all, look at all of these witnesses, all of these people who have seen it. And in Paul's day, there's going to be many that are going to go uh, to their death believing and proclaiming that Jesus was raised from the dead. Now, here's the, the crowd's response. The moment they heard Paul bring up the topic of resurrection, some of them ridiculed him, then got up and left. But others said, we want to hear you again later about these things. So Paul left the meeting. Now, I love what we see here because we're seeing this really the, what, what often happens with the gospel. You know, there's, a, there's kind of an instant separation. There's those that ridiculed and there was like, well, wait a minute. I want to hear more about this. I want to understand more about what you're talking about. And so Paul comes back to them. But there were some who believed the message and joined him from that day forward. Among them were Dionysus, a judge on the leadership council, and a woman named Demarius. And so here we see that some of those began to believe. They began to engage. They began to accept the message of who Jesus is. Now, Paul's traveling to a different city. It says, when Paul left Athens, he traveled to Corinth, where he met a Jewish man named Aquila, who was originally from northeastern Turkey. He and his wife Priscilla had recently immigrated from Italy to Corinth because Emperor Claudius had expelled all the Jews from Rome. Now, here we begin to see this happened pretty regularly. There was a, an attack against the Jewish people by the Roman Caesar, the Roman emperor at the time. This was Claudius. A bit later, uh, Nero is going to attack all of the Christians and, uh, and do all kinds of other horrible things. That's when all of the being fed to lions and all of that begins. And so here we see, again, religious persecution is pushing people into a new area. Since Paul and Aquila were both tent makers by trade, Paul moved in with them and they became business partners. Now, I think this is just fascinating. It's just one sentence in all of the book of Acts. And we know that Paul was a tent maker. That was the trade that he grew up with. But here he finds some other tent makers. And so he moves in with them and they strike up a business deal. They start making tents together. This is, this is their tent making business. They are going into business to make money. <clears throat> Paul needs money for his ministry. He needs money to, to survive, to do what he needs to do. And so here he's using his hands. He's using the skills God has given him so that he can then support all of the ministry that he's doing. And this is a real encouragement to a lot of us. You know, you may wonder, you know, I want to do ministry. That's what I'm called to do. Well, you know, for most of us, what God calls us to do is work somewhere in the world and then use our time to do ministry. That's exactly what we see the Apostle Paul doing. And he's doing it here with Priscilla and Aquila, a couple that he mentions in Romans chapter 16 as being, uh, having putting their life on the line for him and leading a church and how all the churches in the New Testament were blessed by this couple who worked with Paul in this trade together. It says, every Sabbath day, Paul spoke openly in the synagogue to both Jews and non-Jews, attempting to persuade them to believe the message of Jesus. When Silas and Timothy finally arrived from Macedonia, Paul spent all of his time preaching the Word of God, trying to convince the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. When they viciously slandered him and hurled abuses on him, he symbolically shook the dust off his clothes in protest against them. He said, have it your way. Then I am guiltless as to your fate, for the blood guilt of your actions will be on your own heads. And from now on, I will preach to the non-Jews. And at that moment, Paul had a transition in his ministry and he began to move forward. So I just want to pray for each one of us this morning. That as we're going throughout our day, headed off to work or whatever it is God has for you this morning, that we will just be filled with his spirit, open to carrying the love of Christ everywhere we go. So Holy Spirit, fill us. We love you and we receive you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you guys. We love you. Have an amazing day. God bless.